Our next speaker is Professor Rajesh Lara Mohan from SUTD Singapore. Professor Rajesh will be talking about the rise of self reconfigurable maintenance robots. His brief biography Dr. Mohan is currently assistant professor with the engineering product development pillar at Singapore University of Technology and Design, SUTD. He received his PhD and MSc degrees from the Nanyuan Technological University in 2012 and 2005. He obtained his B degree from the Amrita Institute of Technology and Sciences, Bharatiya University, India. His research interests are in robotics with an emphasis on self-reconfigurable platforms, as well as research problems related to robot ergonomics and autonomous systems. He has published more than 80 papers in leading journals, books, and conferences. He is the recipient of SG Mark Design Award in 2016, 17, and 18, ASWE Best of Design in Engineering Award in 2012, Tan Kaki Young Inventors Award in 2010 and A Design Award in 2018. He is the co founder of LionSpot, a robotics company that develops and deploys a wide range of autonomous cleaning robots. He is also a visiting faculty member of the International Design Institute at Zhejiang University, China. So, Professor Rajesh, May I kindly request you for your talk, the keynote address on the rise of self-reconfigurable maintenance robots. Website adjustments. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for the introduction. Um, uh, you know, I'm very excited to be in the in this forum to share our um, current progress uh, development and our attempts towards commercialization with reconfigurable robots. Uh, thank you all. I will share my slides now. So uh, again, thank you. I'm um, uh, Mohan. I'm with the uh, Singapore University of Technology and Design. Uh, so this presentation would uh, uh, provide an insight into our ongoing research, development, and commercialization efforts in the areas of uh, self-reconfigurable uh, maintenance robot at the university. So reconfigurable robots are emerging class of uh, uh, platforms uh, that possesses ability to shape shift. Uh, the robots can change their shape from one form to another either to overcome difficulties in the environment that they navigate or the tasks that these robots perform. So there has been a number of demonstrations. So one area that we want to particularly focus is uh, in the area of autonomy. How do we make such robots truly autonomous? So as to perceive the environment, make optimal decisions on what is the right morphology and form factor by themselves, uh, and then to push the boundaries in terms of task performance. Um, uh, secondly, we also want to carefully choose meaningful applications where we can demonstrate the power of such reconfigurable robots, which has been an open question and a grand challenge for uh, such shape changing platforms. So when it comes to reconfigurable robots, uh, we truly believe that reconfigurable robot possesses an entire spectrum where fixed robots form um, 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 an aspect or a sample of, the, of, of this spectrum. So here with reconfigurable robots, we could see um, a number of research streams that we are pursuing at, uh, at SUTD um, that ranges from autonomy, where we look at um, uh, frameworks for autonomy spanning manual reconfiguration all the way to semi-autonomous and fully autonomous reconfigurable uh, robots, where the robots are capable of uh, uh, sensing environment and to reconfigure all by themselves at one go or uh, with some human intervention to to certain degree or completely requiring manual intervention to change from one form to uh, to another form also in terms of um, um, architecture uh, we are looking at platforms that are um, intra reconfigurable where one robot can change to many forms a robot that is crawling at one time rolling at another time and flying at another time so here we are developing um, robots, autonomous reconfigurable platforms that uses intra-reconfigurability. Also, we are pursuing platforms that possesses inter-reconfigurability where we have multiple robots 
um, they can assemble to create a global form, a global morphology. They can disassemble and reassemble to form another uh, global morphology. So in these ways, the platforms constantly uh, break up and rejoin to create morphologies that are very useful for navigating or very useful to perform a task. So also here in our lab, we pursue robots that exhibit intra-reconfiguration for very meaningful application in uh, logistics and material handling. And our lab has made um, an important contribution in the field in the form of a new type of nested reconfigurable robot called the nested reconfigurable robot where um, uh, such robots possesses both the ability of intra-reconfiguration and inter-reconfiguration. As a single unit, these robots can change to many forms, as well as they can come together um, uh, as many to form global uh, morphologies. So these are some of the exciting areas that we are working with. Um, and as uh, the school that I'm affiliated with in SUTD is engineering product development, there is a strong focus on meaningful application and translation of research um, in the form of commercialized platforms for real use. So I will now take you through a few of these intriguing platforms that we develop at, uh, uh, at our university. The first one I want to share, it belongs to the class of tiling robots, uh, a new class of robot that we are developing here. Uh, there has been numerous effort with quadrup robots, uh, hexapods, bipeds, and on. So here, for the first time, we have developed robots that derive inspiration from Tetris. Um, yes, the Tetris game that we know from uh, handheld uh, game controller to that of mobile phone apps now, uh, the popular Tetris game. So we uh, leverage on these principles to develop robots, but carefully anchor them to uh, fundamental research and meaningful application. So H-Tetro, uh, as we call these robots, are developed for cleaning applications. The robots are capable of changing to one of seven uh, forms of a typical uh, Tetris, uh, and uh, the robots perform cleaning. What you are seeing here is a conventional cleaning robot. It's circular in shape, and the robot has a number of issues accessing uh, the space, right? So the robot cannot access this area. Uh, the robot cannot access another area because of the furniture. So what you are seeing is basically uh, a typical room uh, with furniture fulfilled uh, as observed by an overhead camera. We have removed the seats from the chair and on just to get and uh, um, just to observe the robot better. So now you see our hash tetro platform. The ability of the hash tetro platform is to reconfigure from one form uh, to another. And our research um, spans usage of variety of sensors from low computation sensors, uh, using sonars, inertia sensors, uh, wheel encoders to that of using 2D LiDAR, 3D LiDAR and depth cameras. But in every case, um, our effort is to um, open up uh, the current constraints with accessibility. As you can see, the conventional robot here covers less than 30% of the area, just because the robot cannot move to the other side uh, due to geometric constraint. Whereas in the case of our hash tetro oh, robot, it assumes the shape of uh, it assumes the shape of eye uh, to pass to the other side, continue cleaning. Um, uh, with the current day uh, research in area coverage robots, uh, a strong or cleaning robots broadly, a lot of emphasis is placed on the payload, like cleaning payload, uh, the cleaning mechanism. However, if a robot simply cannot access, it cannot clean. So here, our focus has been on um, significantly improving the accessibility performance of the robot by instilling reconfiguration principles. The, with respect to mechanisms, a number of follow-on work has been done in, in, in the aspect of uh, holonomic uh, mechanisms, in the aspect of uh, four-wheel driven mechanisms and control uh, approaches that support such robots to achieve high performance. So it's not just about uh, mechanism and control. So our work has gone um, uh, to, to include also autonomy uh, efforts. So um, the typical approaches to autonomy in floor cleaning robots has been uh, covering the area through zigzag approach. The robot goes in a zigzag or the robot going in spiral uh, formations. So in our case, for the very first time, we developed uh, a tiling theoretic approach. So in this case, when a room is observed, just like what you are seeing now, um, the robot will move around the periphery or cover the area cell by cell to generate a tiling set, uh, just as this, that populate the entire area. So once a tiling set is generated for a map, then the robot have to merely go to each one of these coordinate location to synthesize the respective form. 
So the, the small window uh, below shows um, the robot synthesizing the, um, uh, the, the pre pre developed uh, uh, synthesized set of tiles uh, as it passes through uh, the map. And by doing so, the robot will ensure 100% area coverage. Imagine deploying your robot. Your robot either follows the wall um, all around the perimeter, building a map, and then the algorithm generates a tiling set to populate the entire area, and the robot filling all the tiles as needed to ensure 100% area coverage. Or we have developed approaches that use cellular decomposition. Once the robot is deployed, the robot goes cell after cell. So it can be a two meter by two meter cell. It can be a three meter by three meter cell. And the robot generates styling set for each one of these uh, cells or, and capturing one cell at a time. So uh, with a typical game of uh, Tetris, when we play in our phone, when our screen is tiled up, the player loses the game of tiling. Whereas in the case of our robots, our robots simply tile the entire place and win the game of cleaning. So here, the algorithm, these algorithms have been further uh, optimized uh, in some cases to maximize for area coverage, um, to minimize the number of reconfigurations, uh, to make it energy optimal. Even though um, the reconfiguration looks really cool, the robot switching from one form to another, there is a tiny uh, energy cost that is associated with uh, every reconfiguration. So we have also developed algorithm that uh, uh, takes into account energy as a cost function uh, to optimize for, um, uh, for, for energy as um, uh, the robot maximizes the uh, area coverage. So we have also tuned the algorithm to minimize the area that is recovered because we don't want the robot to, uh, to go to the same area uh, again. So the algorithm that you soon see now, uh, that you are watching now has been further fine-tuned to address a number of uh, other uh, issues. So beyond floor, we looked at developing a wide suit of uh, reconfigurable robots that tackle uh, particularly maintenance applications. So one application that stood up is cleaning staircases. With cleaning floors is exhaustive, but with cleaning staircases um, is ergonomically more difficult for uh, cleaning professionals. Uh, so that is an important area that we wanted to focus with um, over a hundred companies making floor cleaning robot and none making staircase cleaning and with many open questions for uh, research and development. So we develop Estetro, a new class of um, robot that targets uh, staircase cleaning. Um, again, here we had to resolve a number of issues that were related to mechanisms, uh, powertrain, control, um, uh, with respect to autonomy with the platforms, because here with staircase, the robot does not deal with only X, Y, um, coordinates, locomotion, but also in, uh, in Z as the robot climbs the staircase. Um, and different type of sensor principles uh, and fusion of sensor data used for accessing star cases. So the, the, uh, again, with our trials, we have uh, proved the ability of the robot to cross, uh, to clear seven stories, um, to also um, handle people that are ascending and descending uh, star cases. So we have device um, control approaches and, uh, 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 and locomotion principles for the robot to handle um, 10 different type of staircases, straight, uh, left-leaning, right-leaning, spiral staircases, and, and beyond. So we have, uh, uh, we have invested heavily in terms of AI developments for the robot to handle feature of interest and classification of staircases, so as to generate respective primitives to approach and, and handle them. So currently, we have licensed the um, robot to a commercial company that is looking to bring the robot to market within uh, one year time. So beyond star cases, we want to scale again further deeper into maintenance platform. And one issue that we encountered was with maintenance uh, of glass facades. Increasingly, more and more built um, infrastructures in urban uh, cities are, um, are filled with gl um, um, glass facades. So again, it can be a high rise building or glass facades that just spans one single story. So here we, we develop robots that uh, overcome typical issues in um, commercial robots and, and research platforms that exist now. So at the moment, there are about 20 to 30 units that are in commercial space and about equal number of uh, research groups that are developing uh, facade cleaning robots or facade glass facade maintenance robots. However, with all of these, uh, platforms. The focus is on uh, the ability of the robot to achieve area coverage, ability to adhere properly to the surface and on. They're, they're overcoming a major accessibility issue. So here, 
um, we looked at the ability of the platform to move from one panel to another. As you can, as you can see in this video here, um, with glass facades, often the glass frames are separated uh, are separated by uh, a positive obstacle. Um, and, the, and with the current robot that is being researched or robots that are in the marketplace, often they do not have the ability to move from one panel to another and would require human intervention to move the robots from one panel to another, leading to a big drop in productivity. So here we wanted to overcome this issue by developing a reconfigurable robot that can handle cleaning of a single panel, but is capable of moving from one panel to another, overcoming the positive obstacle. So our Mantis robot used the impeller principle for adhesion. Again, a number of research work has done in terms of mechanisms, in terms of control principle for the impeller that we have, and the ability of the robot to traverse autonomously uh, upon finishing the coverage task from one panel to another. The two lines that you see are merely for uh, safety as recommended by the Build Construction Authority of Singapore uh, for deployments of such uh, uh, glass facade uh, robots. So beyond, uh, beyond Mantis, we wanted to scale developments given that the fundamental principle of uh, uh, the platforms developed are reconfigurable and modular. We want the robots to be tested in scalable applications and Kiropter was one such scalable application where we leveraged on fundamental developments in Mantis, uh, our glass facade cleaning uh, robot for potential application in aircraft maintenance. Um, aircraft maintenance is another uh, ergonomically difficult and often dangerous work process where personnel have to climb up the aircraft to inspect the aircraft, monitor, uh, find precise information and details from the ex exterior surfaces of the, uh, of the airplane. And at times this, this is expensive and very delicate process. And robots are capable of handling such uh, delicate work processes. So here we developed Kiropter a robot that is capable of um, uh, navigating in the external surface. Um, uh, there were two critical challenges. One is for the robot to transform from the wing to the fuselage. Uh, and the second is for the robot to go around uh, the fuselage. So both these capabilities were uh, demonstrated in different type of aircrafts, wide body aircraft, narrow body aircraft, and with uh, fighter jets. So, and we were able to do that. Um, and beyond that, the, the robot was equipped with uh, cameras and other sensor uh, platforms so as to monitor any deform deformities or um, um, uh, observations of interest uh, as requested by the, uh, by the customer. So it's not just about smaller platforms. We uh, have larger reconfigurable robots too, um, that of vehicle class. So Panthera is our vehicle class of uh, reconfigurable robot and um, uh, Panthera is being developed very closely with the National Environmental Agency of uh, Singapore, where we are developing autonomous robots that can sweep uh, pavements. So pavement sweeping is um, uh, again a work process that is laborious. Here we are developing a reconfigurable robot that is capable of compressing and expanding. Um, the platform is holonomic so as to be agile and responsive to the human crowds in, uh, that, that occupy uh, pavements. So the platform was developed in-house in SUTD um, uh, from mechanism control aspects, autonomy aspects. So currently we are running trials within our campus to validate the, the different um, um, features of the robot platform. A number of unique features have been demonstrated on board our Panthera. The ability of the robot to uh, compress from uh, both sides while in motion, as you can see uh, in, this, in this video, trajectory following with such shape-shifting platform on the move uh, is complicated and a difficult one. Uh, beyond that, autonomy has been a larger challenge as the perimeter of the platform constantly changes as we, um, as we perform area coverage tasks in um, uh, in pavements and, and at times on, on road as we, uh, as we perform our test. So again, this is one, from one of our tests in the campus uh, in, in terms of uh, obstacle avoidance, trajectory following and, and, and beyond. So another intriguing platform from our lab that targeted uh, originally a defense application and currently we are expanding it to civilian is that of Scorpio. So Scorpio has been, has been originally uh, developed for urban reconnaissance mission, um, a scenario where an urban center um, is under hostage by hostile forces uh, and robots have to be thrown in to collect information. 
So there has been robots developed to this end, and most of these robots are tracked robots, big bulky robots that are difficult to move for, with portability issues, uh, with autonomy issues. These robots are highly observable by hostile forces who can then destroy these platforms. So with our MINDEF, they had this big question to develop robots that are small, um, in this case, less than 10 centimeters uh, in diameter, robots that are agile, uh, robots that are capable of crawling, rolling, and wall climbing, a reconfigurable platform. Um, and that was a challenge that was put uh, on to us um, with expectations on autonomy, with expectations on, um, on longer single charge lifetime so that these robots can be deployed with easy and they can stay put to provide critical information. So we responded. Um, when we took on this project, there was no precedence of a single robot that can crawl, roll, and climb wall, a reconfigurable in nature. So we looked to inspirations and our inspirations came from six different species. Um, and these six different species, surprisingly uh, for us, they, they have all three uh, locomotion behaviors, crawling, rolling, and wall climbing. Only one of the species stood out because of their ability to roll in flat terrain. And that came from Sebranus Richenbergi. So Sebranus Richenbergi, as you see the image here, is a class of huntsman spider, only found in the deserts of Morocco. Uh, so because it's an endangered species, we do not have one. I'm not going to show you one in action live, but a video, yes. So I have a video here. Um, yeah, so the, the robot, in this case, the, our robot was um, developed, deriving inspiration from Severinus Richenbergi. The What you see is not animation. Um, uh, it's a real spider that is capable of rolling. Um, with Sebra, with, with uh, uh, Rich and Bergy, one interesting aspect was the ability of the spider to roll in flat ground. We were able to obtain a number of videos um, working with university, uh, working with the universities that that inherently study this uh, spider, uh, and we were able to develop um, uh, models, uh, simulation models of the spider, um, uh, mimicking their uh, uh, crawling motion, mimicking their uh, rolling motion. And with that, we were able to develop artificial systems in the form of uh, robots that uh, that can crawl and roll. So what you are seeing, uh, seeing here is the iterated version of Scorpio. Uh, and so in this case, Scorpio uses an underbelly with nanomaterial suction to climb. Uh, the rope is just for safety for the platform. The robot is also capable of crawling and uh, rolling. Um, the platform was less than 10 centimeters in, in rolling diameter and was able to exhibit a number of uh, gates like recovery gates. Um, for a security mission, recovery gate is important to recover from any type of uh, fall. So we demonstrated um, a, a variety of autonomy uh, missions with these robots and multi-robot cooperation uh, missions uh, too. So with, with our developments in research front and uh, our contributions, uh, mostly in the intellectual area, we wanted to make a socioeconomic impact. Um, and one way we wanted to make that impact is in the form of uh, uh, startups that were inspired from our lab. And one of the uh, startups, the early um, um, or the very first startup from our lab is LionSpot, a company that design and manufacture professional uh, cleaning robots. Um, the company produces uh, modular configurable robots that, um, that meets the evolving needs of the cleaning industry. So cleaning industry has been under big stress for a very long time now uh, because of an obvious reason. Nobody wants to be a cleaning professional and nobody wants their children to be a cleaning professional. With options like uh, Swiggy, um, Grab, um, options, gig jobs coming up, more people are moving towards these jobs. Uh, leaving huge vacancy in cleaning positions. And uh, this is witnessed in most developed and developing countries. And this trend is set to uh, grow even wider in the coming years. Uh, COVID has accelerated the tipping point in terms of adoption of such cleaning robots. As we have seen that the cleaning frequency has increased, the importance of cleaning has increased. However, the number of cleaning professionals in the industry has, de has decreased drastically. Uh, so here with Lionsborn, we are developing professional cleaning robots, not the residential ones, not the ones you see from Samsung and Philips. However, these are robots that clean industrial spaces like airports, hospitals, shopping malls, office buildings, factories, warehouses, um, car parks, large ones, and, and so on. So currently the company has over 70 engineers uh, with a total staff of over 120, all based in Singapore for uh, the moment. 
And we have end-to-end um, um, -end developments that is uh, uh, happening here in Singapore, all the way from design to manufacturing. So currently we are setting up offices in India. So we have an office that is currently being registered in Chennai. Uh, we have an office also being set up in Amsterdam in, uh, in the Netherlands. And we are looking to expand in more uh, countries in the coming uh, year. So we are at Landsport won um, uh, the prestigious Amsterdam Interclean uh, Award. Uh, for innovations uh, in, in the cleaning uh, equipment and cleaning robot category. Um, and again, it's a prestigious uh, award um, given that uh, it's the largest forum for, uh, for cleaning industry. Uh, with uh, Lionsbot, um, about 50 uh, engineers that were trained from our lab uh, in different aspects of robotics transition uh, to the company to power uh, the company in different spectrum from mechanism design to control to perception developments, autonomy developments, UI UX developments, uh, production, manufacturing, and, and so on. So uh, here we, we, we push the boundaries in terms of translation of uh, research into application in commercial space. So our robots from Lionsbot have been um, uh, deployed in a variety of uh, places in Singapore um, with different contexts spanning supermarkets, train stations, airport, shopping malls, um, large warehouses, factory floors, and, and beyond. Also, our robots now have been exported to over uh, 21 countries uh, so far. Uh, so mostly these countries are in Europe. Uh, again, we have distributors that are signed on in an extended uh, set of uh, uh, countries, including India. So our official distributor for India is based in uh, Bangalore. And we have uh, a distributor in uh, Japan, Japan too. So a short video of our robot in uh, action. Baron is a 925 hours robot operator from the future. He uses the Lions Clean app to manage his Lions Bot cleaning robots. Leo Scrub specializes in scrubbing and drying floors. Designed to prevent collisions, she comes with a full suite of safety sensors. Deployment using the Lions Clean app is easy. Being nimble. She can access narrow doors and tight turns readily. Leo Mop cleans silently and uses 70% less water than other machines. Together with Leo Scrub, they form a smart team. Leo Vac cleans both hard floors and carpets. Besides the powerful cleaning performance, she brings joy and laughter everywhere. Leo Pool performs quick swap of 660 liter bins to dispose trash effortlessly. With 24 seven cloud support, Darren can get assistance anytime, anywhere. Darren's dream has become a reality today. Bringing you the robots people love, Lionsbot. So again, with uh, Lionsport, we have a new series of product that has been recently uh, launched. Uh, the Rex, the larger class, again, is configurable. Um, so in, bo in both these robots, the configurability comes from the type of cleaning payloads that these robot uses, like scrubbing, mopping, vacuuming, uh, sweeping, while retaining the major elements. Again, the algorithm also is configurable. <laughs>
and Rex Robot has also made uh, global deployments with over deployments in uh, twenty in in about twenty countries so far. So we see that um, 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 with developments in cleaning domain, we see a further um, uh, possibility of uh, such reconfigurable robots and their use in maintenance uh, spectrum. So with me as a professor at SUTD and a co-founder of LionSpot, I wanted to scale up the impact in non-conflicting other maintenance uh, areas. So currently we have uh, three other uh, startups in, uh, in different uh, domains. Oceania Robotics is a startup uh, from uh, our lab as well that focuses primarily on um, uh, development of robots for marine applications. So uh, ship maintenance is a hazard, uh, is, involves a number of hazardous work process like uh, removal of paint, removal of biofoul. Uh, so here the company develops uh, configurable robots um, uh, to handle these through hydroblasting and uh, grid blasting uh, payloads. And uh, these robots can be operated in manual or uh, semi-autonomous uh, modes. So I will show one of these grid blasting robots in action. So these are work processes that are uh, primarily done uh, by people around the world now. Uh, however, work processes are ergonomically difficult. I have personally tried uh, grid blasting and hydro blasting myself. There is uh, enormous force that run into uh, the person as we hold the nozzle and fire the grid or water. Um, and, and it has long-term implications on, on people. Robots can play a vital role in eliminating some of these very dangerous uh, work processes involving people. Whereas it truly, the robot has the potential to truly transform the jobs where the human can still be in the loop managing five, six robots at a time. And the robots are directly handling these work processes that has huge safety concern. Also such robots can be uh, equipped with uh, uh, features that can make the work process sustainable. So these are some aspects that the company is working at the moment. And how can we transform from, let's say, the first step of making it uh, automatic and the second step um, uh, to account for uh, sustainable, sustainable principles so that the debris can be collected, the water can be reused. And, and these are aspects that the company is, um, uh, is developing uh, at the moment. And you can see how dirty the environment becomes and uh, uh, the robots can truly transform uh, work processes. And Oceania is doing that uh, in, in the front line. So beyond uh, Oceania um, and some of the developments has been demonstrated as part of our um, uh, World Expo, um, Singapore Pavilion. Uh, so robots from uh, Oceania are now part of uh, the Singapore Pavilion. Uh, so at the recently concluded World Expo uh, at, at Dubai. Uh, the robots here, however, are not uh, uh, blasting a sheep or uh, cleaning. Instead, the robots are moving in the wall, uh, collecting environmental data, uh, PM 2.5 data, uh, collect, looking at the plants, uh, monitoring the health of flowers, fruits, vegetation, and such robots are very much needed as the world moves towards uh, uh, vertical green uh, vegetation and vertical gardens. Robots can perform maintenance like uh, plant pot replacement uh, or uh, looking for pest control, performing pest control missions. So here with our robots, we uh, validated uh, means to uh, look at uh, mosquito breeding uh, in the pods, water stagnation, and these are important concerns when it comes to uh, vertical ga garden facades. So there has been another um, uh, startup that has been initiated from the lab, Motor Robotics. Motor Robotics focuses on pest control specifically. Um, so being a tropical country, Singapore has uh, issues, uh, perennial ones with mosquitoes and uh, rats. Uh, and here we are solving them with uh, robots. Uh, I want to specifically focus on mosquitoes and mosquito controlled robots, dragonfly that the company is making. The, the robots are represented in this slide here. Um, so the, uh, these were the very first uh, kind of robots that are used to tackle mosquito control. Uh, so imagine a facility like our university campus so that in any university campus, if there is mosquito complaint, um, we call up uh, the pest control company, they will send people and who do fumigation. They just smoke the place. And mosquitoes simply fly over to the neighboring vicinity, right, or neighboring facility. And when they come, they call up, they see compliance, they call up the pest control company and they come and they do fumigation and mosquito fly back to the campus. So there is no established protocols for benchmarking effect of reduction of mosquitoes uh, or uh, tuning of existing um, equipments that can attract and trap uh, certain type of mosquitoes that causes uh, diseases like uh, um, dengue, malaria, chicken, gunia, zika, and beyond. 
So here with Dragonfly, we have established payloads. We have a five-layer payload um, tuned to attract Aedes mosquito that causes uh, uh, dengue. That is primarily a, a problem here. So the robots are tuned, the robots are aut autonomous. So you can deploy them in places like uh, schools, uh, university campus, uh, airports, um, uh, among other areas where the robots merely move around uh, attracting mosquito using a five layer uh, a payload spanning uh, light spectrum, olfactory, pheromones, uh, color and, and mobility that pulls the mosquito um, the, the system traps the mosquito. We have computer vision and the cloud connectivity uh, so that we provide daily count of mosquito to our uh, uh, building owners. In this case, people can be reassured. You know, we have zones that are more affected by, uh, by dengue where we see more dengue cases and we can reassure people with a number of mosquitoes that our robots are catching on a day-to-day -day basis. So our robots are now deployed in a number of uh, setting uh, like university campuses, we have robots running with country clubs, we have robots running. Um, and we are uh, working with uh, distributors from multiple countries in terms of uh, exporting uh, the robots too. So the company has a number of other uh, configurable versions that tackle rats. Um, we have a residential uh, mosquito control robot, the very first one too. Um, we recently launched our snake repellent robot with uh, big demand from uh, in, uh, infrastructure warehouses, factories in Thailand, um, where there are persistent issues with snakes. Uh, and we have robots that uh, deter and repel uh, snakes. Uh, we, for human, that is, is no longer about uh, low cost, but uh, yeah, the robots can save lives in these cases uh, while dealing with mosquitoes are dealing with uh, snakes. And uh, Motor Robotics is developing robots uh, to that end. And uh, the configuration principles and con configurable um, robotic mechanisms power these, uh, these robots. And finally, the latest of the startup from the lab is Vifa Robotics. So it's a company that design and manufacture uh, educational uh, robots. And these robots are for STEM education, science, technology, engineering, AI, and mathematics. Again, they derive uh, inspiration from our Tetris uh, inspired robots. Um, and the robots are already being um, uh, deployed and used in, in multiple universities and uh, enrichment centers. Uh, so typically universities are using them for research. Uh, some, some universities are using them as a lab uh, kit for uh, courses in control systems, uh, in circuits, signal processing, uh, neural networks, AI, and, and beyond. Um, and we are working very closely, uh, not just offering robots, but also curriculum uh, to the universities and, and colleges. Um, also, we are working with enrichment centers who are actively signing on for our robots to be used as an uh, embodiment for uh, uh, teaching programming uh, like Python, uh, C++, and, and beyond. So with our first production, we have 100 units that is already committed that, that we are um, currently dispatching uh, from our factory here in, uh, in Singapore. So again, we are very keen to work with uh, uh, US partners in terms of uh, uh, providing you with our robots and uh, the curriculum. So thank you. I, I wanted to span the presentation, providing insight into our research in reconfigurable robotics and our experiences in scaling it in a variety of industry setting. So collectively, we have now uh, generated over 150 jobs uh, with these companies and exported robots to over 30 countries. Uh, and we want to accelerate in, in, in the spirit of gaining trust from general public around the world on robots and bringing more and more robots into um, meaningful applications and strengthening our uh, research vision. Thank you. So thank you, Professor Mohan, for such an interesting talk on a variety of applications of reconfigurable robotics, and also the applications that you are shown with the startup. So now I would request some questions from the audience and you can raise your hand if you have some questions. Hello. Uh, yeah, Professor, uh, thank you for your nice presentation. It is really, uh, really very, very innovative that you have presented. And we would like to just uh, go through your work uh, from your uh, research articles. Uh, I, my, I have a question uh, regarding to your tile, uh, the tile kind of robots. So uh, my question is that what kind of uh, uh, sensing and actuation uh, uh, you have used? What kind of sensors you have used in that? Uh, to just uh, make that kind of pattern of tiles. Yes, is, is it so with, with respect to our Tetris robots, we have robots of different scale and size. 
um, again, with the different type of sensor uh, configurations too. So we have robots on one extreme using purely uh, bump sensor, inertial sensor, uh, wheel encoders. So it's low computation um, to another extreme where the robot uses multiple uh, depth cameras and uh, 3D lidars uh, like Oster. So, um, so we have both extremes. Uh, again, it really depends on the computational power and the scale and uh, uh, the space, the area that the robot uh, covers and the precision to which we want to avoid, the, avoid obstacles. So in, in certain stream of research that we pursue, we allow uh, the robots um, uh, to gently bump uh, and collide with the obstacles. So in such cases, um, uh, we go towards, uh, we make an assumption to carefully use low computation and low cost sensors. And in another end, we look at completely avoiding any type of obstacle or even to make classification, right? So are we approaching a child or are we approaching an adult? So if we are approaching a child, the robot would slow down and, and there is always a complete awareness of situation. Uh, so in such research streams, we are using high computation and, and high precision sensors on board. Uh, we work with the entire uh, spectrum in this case, but to merely reconfigure alone, um, it can be done with both. You know, it's not necessarily you need to have high computation sensors. You can have, um, uh, you can have sonar ring, you can have um, infrared uh, sensors to detect the type of obstacle for the platform to, to reconfigure and cover uh, an area. Okay. And, and for uh, for cleaning purpose, uh, what kind of uh, mechanism you have installed in this particular system? Yes. So uh, again, like I mentioned, is uh, not a single system, but a whole spectrum of robots that we have built. Uh, so we, with respect to cleaning mechanism, we have experimented very different type of mechanism from scrubbing, uh, mopping, uh, vacuuming, and the steaming um, uh, are, are the more popular ones that uh, uh, that we are that we have uh, test better with the uh, tiling class of robots the complex among them is uh, uh, scrubbing because we need powerful brushes that that exert thrust on the floor uh, with use of soap to clean and to recover the water waste and regarding to the algorithm part so it is like a learning based algorithm for means uh, to adapt the shape and uh, to know the, uh, the the area around it, what kind of algorithm you have used to control? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. So here with respect to um, learning, we have taken uh, again many ways. So we uh, to, to briefly put it, we have probably maybe 50, 60 publications so far in this, uh, in this topic um, that spans navigation control and autonomy, um, uh, many on planning, um, again, pertaining to this question. So we have AI uh, driven approaches where uh, the robot look at a map and it proposes a specific uh, form factor only to cover an area. So the reconfiguration don't happen all the time. However, the reconfiguration happens one time for a particular room, right? So that can be an approach where you are minimizing the number of time robot reconfigures, but there is only one reconfiguration per room, right? So, so we have some world that drives in that direction. Uh, in another area where the robot is always reconfiguration, so always reconfiguring, so it's dynamic, right? So the reconfiguration is dynamic. Uh, and the robot is always attempting to choose an area. So we have recent works that you can um, uh, you can pursue further beyond this uh, presentation. Um, is we have an, um, a robot that has almost an infinite number of reconfiguration states with uh, with this uh, Tetris class of robot, right? So with that work, we no longer bound ourselves to the seven state of polyomino because if we can if you can see in the video presentation I shared the robot was limited to only seven forms. Imagine if every 0 0.1 degree of hinge activation corresponds to a state, then you have a number of states. With one degree, you have 1,600 states uh, for the robot. So we have also uh, um, test bedded and, and pursued research in the area where every degree or every 0.1 degree of the hinge motor turn corresponds to a state. And with that case, the robot can cover area like a pillar, right? So the, ro the robot can assume a shape of a curve, like a C, um, uh, or can fit with uh, an irregular shape to cover, which is possible with uh, the type of robot if we unbound ourselves from uh, the rules of polyomino, which regulates the robot to only seven states. Uh, so we have also pursued the work. So in, in many of these cases, learning has been an underlying principle. Uh, we have worked in the area of reinforcement learning, 
um, uh, to to dictate the um, uh, max either maximizing um, the area coverage uh, in other case uh, minimizing the energy cost. So we have a variety of work done, and if it excites you more, we are always happy to establish a collaboration uh, with your team. Yeah, sure. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, for your responses. Uh, and one one last question I'm having in my mind because I'm really curious regarding to your tile forming robot. So these these hinges hinges are actuated, hinge joints are actuated by some uh, kind of actuator. Okay, so here we have experimented three different approaches. One where um, there is a passive hinge and uh, simply the robot uh, wheel actuators engage, you know, so, so there is no hinge activation. It's basically each of these block has uh, actuators to drive um, and to transform from one form to another. So the second approach is where we have actuated hinges. So we have uh, dedicated motors um, that allow for reconfiguration. Then the third is where we have a variable hinge um, you know, uh, I, I didn't delve deeper in, into that. So currently we are using, you, you, in the, by, by positioning the hinge um, in um, either left or right edge, you can generate uh, different type of uh, uh, configuration patterns. Uh, so in one of our work, we have developed a configurable hinge. So the robot can configure to different states. However, the hinge can move from left to right. And by doing so, you can generate new type of configurations with the same um, hash state or the same class of robot. So there are three different type of work that we have uh, pursued to this end. So they attach with themselves with the help of magnets. Um, so we have two. One is like uh, magnets, uh, and another is solenoid. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for your yes. uh, response. Thanks. So thank you, professor. And like, is there any more questions from audience? can take one quick short one. Uh, uh, may I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, you know, my name is Nayan and uh, thank you for your nice presentation. My first question is uh, related to the aircraft cleaning uh, device. Uh, how, the, uh, how the robot sticks to the wall? Is it by vacuum or? Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yes, Nayan. So here with our aircraft maintenance uh, robot, we use the impeller uh, suction. So is the yeah, impeller suction for, for adhering. Um, one major difficulty when we undertook this project, so this was in partnership with ST Aerospace, Singapore Technologies Aerospace, uh, a major aircraft maintenance company in Singapore. Um, so we had to spend 50% of the time um, devising algorithms, devising mechanisms to fit to the tight regulations. Um, and again, uh, we devise mechanisms that are easy to tune, easy to configure, uh, so that we could um, uh, validate the two expected uh, demonstrations going around the fuselage and transition from wing to fuselage. Yeah, but it's a very exciting possibility for uh, uh, future robots to clean, to inspect um, uh, aircrafts. Oh, nice. Thank you, sir. So, uh, sir, one last question I have uh, regarding a tetra robot. Yes. Uh, you mentioned that uh, uh, the reconfigurability re re is achieved uh, using magnets and solenoids. So yes. uh, uh, does this magnetic field interfere with the electronics of the uh, robot? Because the same problem I'm facing. Uh, so how do you overcome uh, this? Yes, so uh, again, even though we have tested two different approaches, magnetic and uh, solenoids, we are now um, inclining more to solenoids. Uh, with our magnetic docking, we saw two issues. One is with the interference. However, we can overcome interference with a certain type of uh, um, um, certain type of packaging of the uh, of the docking mechanism away from the electronics and positioning and casing of uh, the circuitry. Uh, the, the major issue was the degradation of performance over time. Um, oh. and, uh, um, and platforms often uh, lose contact, right? And uh, they have to autocorrect all the time, um, introducing um, large issues and consuming a lot of time. So most of our newer platforms are maybe almost all use as uh, solenoid. Um, and with solenoid, we uh, is energy efficient and uh, we do not have issues uh, in terms of uh, mis misaligned or missed um, reconfiguration. Okay. Thank you very much, sir.
So once again, I thank you, Professor Mohan. Like we also have various development projects in robotics at Smart Materials Lab. And we look forward to take this discussion forward in the form of collaboration. And I guess like the participants had a very good insightful experience from your talk, which will help them with their research. Once again, thank you, Professor Mohan. Thank you, thank you very much. You know, uh, my presentation provides an insight and, and the idea is to uh, look for potential uh, collaboration. So we have always enriched ourselves uh, and expanded uh, and, and grown in a positive way through collaboration. So I'm looking forward uh, to any positive collaboration uh, with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Thanks again for the opportunity. Thank you.